Suppose we wanted to find this integral here, the integral of e to the negative x on the interval 0 to infinity. Well, before we get into that, let's, let's try and kind of get a warm-up here by looking at a bit of a simpler problem. Let's, um, let's first go ahead and plot e to the negative x just so we kind of got a visual idea of what we're looking at here. So you can see it's going to be a decreasing function. But um, before we solve this, this integral, let's, um, let's try and do something a little simpler just to get, get a little warm-up here. Let's try to find the integral of e to the negative x just from 0 to 1. And graphically, that's just going to look like this, where we're trying to find that area in the blue shaded there. Now, that's pretty simple, right? All we got to do is apply the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. And the first step of that is find the antiderivative of e to the negative x and then and evaluate it at 1 and 0. So if we write that out, um, the antiderivative of e to the negative x is going to be negative e to the negative x. And if, um, if you're not sure how, to, how we got there, well, you we could do it systematically using u substitution, but um, perhaps an easier way in this case, since it's kind of a simpler antiderivative, is to sort of guess at the function and then take the derivative of our guessed antiderivative and just make sure it matches our initial function. So our guess was negative e to the negative x as the antiderivative. So if we take the derivative of our antiderivative, we find we use the chain rule and we just get back to e to the negative x. So thankfully, this is going to be the same thing as this over here. So we're good. So we can go ahead and continue on now with our definite integral process. And this is going to become negative e to the negative 1 minus e to the 0 which simplifies down to negative the quantity of 1 over e minus 1, which if we just go ahead and distribute that negative sign, we're just going to end up with 1 minus 1 over e. And that's going to be our area in blue here. So just as a bit of a warm-up, um, we know we can calculate this. Um, however, what we're really trying to do is calculate this integral up here. And instead of going to 1 as our upper limit, we're going to infinity, which which may seem like a bit of a, daunt a daunting task. I mean, we can't really even visualize this graphic. But before we get into this, let's just kind of zoom out and zoom in a little bit to, to where we are um, as far as definitions go. So this, of course, is an integral. There are a couple different types of integrals. There's indefinite integrals, and then there's definite integrals. And of course, this is a definite integral because we're dealing with limits here. In this case, it's 0 and infinity are the lower and upper limit. And there are different types. There are different types of definite integrals. Um, proper ones, which we're more familiar with, and improper ones. And this one is an improper one because the limit, because that upper limit is infinity. Um, but there are different types of improper integrals. There is discontinuous integrand type, which we'll talk about in a video that I will link at the end. And the and then there's the kind that we're discussing here, which is an infinite interval type of improper integral. And we like to further classify these types of, of improper integrals as being either convergent or divergent. So what that the question there is whether or not that when we evaluate it, does it actually converge or does it actually equate to a definite value? If it does, it's convergent. And similarly for discontinuous integrand, we can classify those as convergent and divergent. But what we're dealing with here for now is an infinite interval type of improper definite integral. And what we want to figure out, is this converge or does it diverge? So let's consider graphically what we might expect here. This is a Desmos plot of, of our initial integral, which is just from 0 to 1. And what we're trying to do here is we want to keep increasing that upper limit um, until it goes off to infinity. And of course, this is difficult um, at first glance because we can't even visualize this. How are we going to calculate it? We don't even we can't even visualize it going all the way off to infinity. As we keep as we keep going increasing b, we're adding more and more area in the blue here. So the area is going to in, add indefinitely because this function e to the x never actually goes to zero. So the question is, does that adding of the area make this blue area go to a finite value, or does it make that blue area increase without bound? So surprisingly, we can actually answer this question pretty easily. 
So first thing we got to be careful with here is that we have this, of course, this upper limit's infinity, and that makes this an m proper integral. So since it's an improper integral, what we've got to do is convert it to a proper integral, where ins instead of that infinity, let's just call that b. So we just, we took this infinity and changed it to this b here. And now, by making that switch, we end up with a proper integral. But of course, we want that b root to, to, um, to get bigger and bigger, so we got to make this the limit as b approaches infinity of this integral. And now we've converted an improper integral into the limit of a proper one. And we can go ahead and evaluate. Now we evaluate this in the same way using the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. We just got to be really careful to keep that limit notation out front as we go. So this translates into the limit as b approaches infinity of negative e to the negative x, which is the antiderivative of our function evaluated at b and zero. So now we just got to plug b and zero in. And we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit because we know that e to the negative b is just going to equal 1 over e to the b. And we know that e to the 0 is just going to be 1. And now that we've, um, we've got to this point, it's easy to go ahead and just go ahead and apply that limit as b approaches infinity. So as b approaches infinity, this b right here is going to get really big. And so the denominator here is going to get enormous when you have 1 over um, an infinitely big denominator this gives you an infinitesimally small value so this is going to go to zero and of course our one just stays the same so now we can just simplify this and um, take that limit out because we've already applied it so this is just going to be equal to um, negative quantity zero minus one and dist again distributing that negative sign we're just left with one if um, that value surprises you well you're not alone because it it just seems almost too simple, right? Is that could this really be equal to one? I mean, we had we had e, and then we had it go into infinity and this complicated curve. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and check that. Just check our intuition graphically or numerically and see if if it looks like we're on the right track. So here's our graph zoomed out a little bit. In this case, our b values are, is around one, and this is what we calculated initially. And what we want to do is keep increasing b here. Now, does it really make sense that the area under this this um this curve here is just going to equal 1. Well, let's see what happens. We increase b, we can see that area up here is the numerically calculated integral from 0 to b of this function. So we can see we can increase b. And actually, when we get out here pretty far, we find that that's this function here, e to the x, is getting really small really fast. Because you have e to the b on the denominator, that makes that value get really small. And so it turns out we're not really adding much area as, we, as b gets larger. So as we keep pushing b out, we find that, wow, it looks like um, we are actually getting pretty close here to 1. So at this point, I think we can go ahead and claim victory and just say this, this improper integral is, in fact, equal to 1. But um, before we close here, let's kind of zoom out again and see what we've just discovered here. So back to our, our definitions here. Now, this was a infinite interval type of improper definite integral. And by taking this, by converting this improper integral into the limit of a proper integral, we were able to discover that it actually just equaled 1, which is, of course, a finite value. And so we can say that this improper integral is convergent, namely to 1. And the next video will discuss the other type of improper integral, the, those with a discontinuous integrand.